what I'm about to say next does not apply to you. For those of you who are not and not familiar with the concept, it's very easy, okay? Do you need some fancy setup? Do you need some sort of altar shrine space, et cetera, so on and so No, you don't. Okay, and, and that's kind of going against how I got started because I did do all of that. But I've been doing this a long time and I can tell you right now, you, you really can just start with yourself. Okay, get yourself nice and relaxed and quiet and just make a prayer to your higher power. Or if you don't believe in a higher power, just, you know, have it in your mind that I want to develop a, a relationship with my ancestors ancestors known and unknown seen and unseen that's probably the most important thing that you need to take away from all of this when we focus on specific individuals we tend to not get a whole lot of positive feedback if you will or um you know because uh, a lot of people say well i don't feel um my ancestors you know i made a, a altar and um I, I put the water there and all this stuff and I just don't feel a connection. And then my next question will be, did you put pictures? Yes, I got a picture of my grandma. Okay, now that that's the thing, all right? Um, if you are focused on a specific ancestor like grandma or, or great grandma or whatever the case may be, you might not get the kind of result you want. It's best to welcome them all. Now, does that include ancestors that might have done wicked things, okay, who weren't good people? That's a little tricky. But for now, let me just say, if you believe in a higher power, let them know that you only want those who have you in good favor, okay? And block anybody else that has bad intentions or disfavor. Keep them away. Just move them on out the way, okay? Um, cause that's a, a big concern. Now, I didn't go that way when I got started, but a lot of my clients I give readings for that's, that's a concern. Okay. And the advice I give them seems short. Um, what about the, what about the setup? You know, because we're humans, we are sensory people, you know, um, we tend to focus our thoughts a lot better when we have visuals, okay, when we have certain physical, tangible things, um, meditation, which is what I was alluding to, you know, just now, isn't for everybody. A lot of people just can't do it, okay? It's, it, it can be difficult um, for a lot of folks, and I understand that. So sometimes having representations, sometimes having uh, items, okay, uh, facilitate this process a lot better. So when I got started under the advisement of um, Ababa Lawa, who was a priest of the uh, Ifa Yoruba tradition, he told me not to use any photos. And the basic setup required, you know, just a surface with a single white candle, a glass of clean, clear water, and a vase with a white flower or some white flowers in it. No photos, no obituaries, no other items were required. I set this up on a bedroom dresser. Now, there are a lot of folks, uh, particularly those in the traditions, um, who discourage these kinds of things in the bedroom. And, you know, if, if that's you, then this doesn't apply to you. But I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. That was my, you know, set up at the time. And it worked for me. The day that I set this up, and I was very clear on ancestors known and unknown, seen and unseen. I had a dream about my maternal grandmother. She came to me in a dream and gave me a message. And that message kept me from doing something that I was thinking about doing that could have changed my life for the worse. And because I heeded her message, I ended up changing my life for the better. Okay. Um, so that is why we do what we do. We need their guidance, okay, because they can empower us. Let me give you a more recent example about how my ancestors get down for me. Um, last week, uh, Thursday and Friday, I was really out of it, dealing with hay fever allergies and sinus crap. And, um, you know, I had the watery eyes and the running nose and the head, you know, my head felt like it was going to pop off my neck because it was so stuffed and congested and my face was all swollen and I had stuff to do, you know, uh, on Saturday, 
me and my family went out um, and did an event with New Era Chicago, which is a hood to hood initiative um, out in Roseland of Chicago, where we walk for like four hours, <laughs> okay, um, marching and uh, getting neighbors involved. You know, they were knocking on doors and spreading the word that, you know, we're here for the people, we're here for the community. You know, we picked up garbage and trash um, on the properties and, um, and did the chants and things, and it was beautiful. Um, so I told my ancestors on Friday night, I'm like, y'all, I need your help here, okay? Because I can't not put my face in the place this Saturday, tomorrow. So y'all need to come and help me out with this now. And when I woke up on Saturday morning, gone. It was as if nothing had happened to me. I felt totally fine, face not swollen, eyes not itching, head not hurting, throat not hurting, uh, I'm fine. Face not, you know, I mean, I, perfect. Okay. That's how the ancestors come through. And I was able to go out there with my family and do what needed to be done. It was great. And I look forward to um, hooking up with New Era Chicago again this weekend. Um, so that's how the ancestors do. They help us. They heal us. All right. They want us to be blessed. They want us to be um financially safe and secure. They want us to live good and live right. They want us to have families, good families. All right. And they will help you facilitate. They will help facilitate all these things if we honor them. Now, does this mean that if you haven't been honoring your ancestors, they haven't been there? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Okay. Because I can think of a lot of times in my youth, you know, honoring ancestors wasn't, wasn't a blip on the radar. OK, but looking back, I can look at all the things that I have gone through um, and I know things could have been a lot worse had it not been for them. OK, a whole lot worse. So I know they've been they, they're with us. They're in us. How can they not be with us? But when you go the extra steps, OK, and this is what some people refer to as sacrifice. When you, you know, sacrifice your time, sacrifice, you know, the food in your pantry, sacrifice the money or, or whatever it is. When you go out of your way and make an effort to create things in their honor and their name and their legacy. OK, it's special. It's meaningful and it pleases them and it makes them happy. OK, so this is something that you can do on your own. Most of my clients do do it on their own, but it's also something that will be a tremendous blessing if you could do it as a family. Get your family involved. And what if we took it beyond the family and got our whole community on, on page with this, on the same page as this? That would be incredible, okay? I like to always refer to the Haitian Revolution when I talk about the power of the ancestors. Uh, most of you know, but some of you may not know that the Haitian Revolution was the only successful slave revolt in history. Now, we've had many rebellions and uprisings and revolts in the United States, but none of them were successful, okay? Now, there are many reasons why. You know, I had a conversation with my niece. She um, went to school for African studies, African-American studies. And so she and I had a conversation about why the Haitians were able to beat the French and why, you know, uh, African-Americans in, in our history um, were not, okay? And there are a lot of reasons that contribute to that, but me being biased and me being where I am, you know, ancestor warrior and all that, I want to think that the reason why the Haitians were so successful is because they kicked off their revolution with a ritual ceremony to the ancestors. They called down the spirits of the ancestors. They had them drums out there. They're beating them drums. They um, offered up a pig around the fire. They danced and they got mounted, you know, by the spirits. They called them the Waz. Um, and the ancestors came down and they called those good day. And they did the damn thing. Okay. So, yeah, my little uh, example about them healing me from my sinus allergy uh, mess you know, doesn't compare to, you know, what the Haitians did with the French, but I'm just trying to give you all an example of how us calling down our ancestors, us honoring them and celebrating them 
is a very powerful thing. It can change your life. Okay? Our ancestors protect us. Okay? Case in point. Um, just this uh, morning, uh, I like to honor my ancestors and, and commune with them and fellowship with them at sunrise. That's just me. All right. Um, and they're very chatty. Okay. <laughs> and they're letting me know that, you know, some individuals, yes, individuals, plural, were, you know, trying to do some spiritual work against me to attack me and all that stuff. And they took care of it. And this won't be the first time and it probably won't be the last. This has happened a lot. Okay. Where they, you know, were up in protection. And so whatever folks are trying to do, it doesn't land on me. It doesn't get past my threshold to affect me or my family or in any way, but they always manage to let me know just heads up daughter, you know, such, such and such and so and so was over here, you know, plotting against you and trying to do this mess. And sometimes they even tell me who they are and how they did it. <laughs> okay. Um, and it, it's just like, wow. And the reason why they do that for me, I don't have to do anything. Okay. I don't go out of my way to return anything or, um, you know, do all these fancy things to, you know, send something back and all that. I don't have to. My ancestors are lit, okay? That's just the way it is. They stay protecting me. And sometimes they will go and kick a motherfucker's ass on my behalf. They'll take whatever that person sent and send it right back on them with some stank on it. Okay? And I have to find out about it after the fact. <laughs> okay? And I always do. I always do. But it's just, you know, all right? Not only can our ancestors protect us in the physical realm, they protect us in the spiritual realm too. You might not be a spiritual worker and you might not think you got spiritual workers in your circle. But let me tell you something. A lot of folks do this kind of mess against others because they know they can do it undetected. Okay. Somebody that got me in the past, church goer, Christian, always vocal about their displeasure and disdain against the kind of stuff I do. So that on the surface, it looks like they would never do this kind of stuff because it's quote witchcraft or it's satanic or it's, you know, voodoo or whatever, whatever. But wouldn't you know it? That motherfucker was in fact trying to do that shit against me. Trying. They actually did. <laughs> okay. They did get me. They got me good. All right. Um, so yeah. Sometimes people just have things happening. If you got your ancestors on guard, you got them protecting you, putting a wall of protection around you, can't nobody mess with you, okay? And if they try, um, they just might get their asses kicked. That's just the way it is. When we are active in social justice for our people, and I don't care what it is, if you're standing up for police brutality, if you're fighting against homelessness, if you're fighting against AIDS, okay, if you're fighting against illiteracy, illiteracy or hunger, if you're fighting for schools, okay, and equality in our public schools and, and um, daycare, if you're fighting against um, um, federal or um, interstate cuts, okay, against education programs, against social services, if you're, you know, whatever you're fighting for, you know, you're fighting against violence and crime in your own community. Um, the ancestors will cover you. They will empower you and they will strengthen you and help you with your fight. Oh, yes, they absolutely will. But if we're not putting in the work and honoring them, then it's a little bit weak. OK, but just think about the possibilities and the promise, because when we celebrate them, we celebrate us too. We've got to get back to that, people, okay? Because we got the will in us to do better. We got the will and the fight in us to push back on the things in this society that harm us, okay? And I really just hope that more of us take some of that same passion for the fight and put it at the feet of the ancestors. Welcome them into your heart, okay? Welcome them into your spaces. 
Honor them. Poor libation.